And you know, uh, Vanessa Blair Lewis, uh, George Mason's women's basketball coach, is joining us today because not only do we want to talk about the women's tournament and the men's NCAA tournament, but Vanessa and George Mason and the success that they had this year heading into the tournament themselves. They were there for the first time. And it's no surprise that Vanessa turned th this program around quickly at George Mason. And Vanessa, thank you for joining us today to talk about some hoops. You and I basically know hoops. We just letting Tony ride along with us. That's oh, right. Man, I told you, they called me the Long Ranger when I was in college. It wasn't because I was riding a horse either. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, yeah, Tony. But 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 now, so let's get to George Mason first because before we get to the tournament, because you've been in the program a short period, and to be able to turn it around to take your team to the NCAA tournament for the first time, could you talk about just getting there and how you see this program and what has been the success or the ingredients for a, ses a successful program? Because you know, you don't get an extension up until 2027, 28, unless you're doing something right. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and you know what, Donna, I'm going to hit all those points. First of all, thank you, Tony, for having me on. You can get in the back seat now. Donna and I got this covered. Oh, yeah, you got yeah. it. <laughs> and we go way back um, to just uh, being able to take part in her, her charities uh, through the DMV, uh, playing in her tournaments. Um, we were just always grateful to be on her team as we rose awareness for cancer. So Donna, thank you for being a giant in the DMV and bringing awareness and just your whole family, your sisters, how you guys took that bull by the horn and just made it so relatable to all of us women through a sport. So I thank you for that. Um, I thank you for your friendship over these years and your support. And so three years ago, Tony, I get a call from Mason to come home. And, you know, Donna and I talked about it a little bit on the side because I know she's, you know, fully invested with a lot of the players that surround George Mason University. Um, you know, Daryl, Daryl Green and, and the likes, you know, and Donna's a huge supporter of women's basketball. And we knew it was going to be a yeoman's job. I was taking over a program that won zero games the year I was coming in zero conference games. So, you know, for me, it was like I'm coming up from Florida and it's like, Vanessa, why would you want to do this? And I'm like, it's the DMV. Like, what are we talking about? This is home of basketball. Like so many of our teams that played in the tournament and in the tournaments past, these players came from the DMV. Like right there, sit well, friends, you have Kiki and, you know, the list goes on and on. But I knew that I could rebuild this program with something great that was literally in our backyard. And that's what we've done. Attract a lot of the DMV girls to come and help really rebuild this program. Sonia Smith and uh, Nalani Lott and, uh, you know, just so many great players around the DMV. And in three years, we were able to go from zero wins to 23 wins. It's the, been the most historic season for Mason in all of their years. Um, and then we were able to be in the WBIT, the first NCAA tournament outside of the NCAA tournament. And that field of 32 was great. And we went up and played Penn State and took them to, double, to overtime. And it was amazing. And uh, we didn't even have a whole cast of characters in this season. We had a couple of injuries here and there. But, you know, you say, how do you do it, Donna? You know, we do it in the hearts of our players. Everybody and every coach has X's and O's. And I can never ascribe to be the best X, X's and O's coach because everybody steals everything and shares everything, right? But I think it's how you deliver the message. And for us, the message is from the inside out. We coach our players from the inside out. You, the last thing you see is the uniform. But what you don't see in the 22 hours that we prepare for the two hours that you do see is the human being that lives inside of that uniform. And so we, we coach our team, and the word we use is called Ubuntu. And Ubuntu is a South African word that means I am, therefore we are. That's a connectedness, a spiritual connectedness that I can't be my best self unless you're your best self. And how can we lean in and support each other? And that term came from Nelson Mandela when he was trying to fight apartheid. That was the spirit that lived in the South Africans. Like, how can we lean in together and, and take, up, take away this terrible atrocity? And so Ubuntu is that spirit of, I have your back. You have mine. If I'm down and you're up, help pull me up. If you're, if I'm hungry and you have food, then I'm never hungry. If I don't have a car, then I have a ride because you do. So our team operates in that spirit. And you'll see it on some of our gear, but mostly it's a, it's a, it's a theme that runs in our program. It's a vibration. 
And that's how we operate. We don't always have to say it, but there's sometimes we have to be reminded that this is an Ubuntu moment where how can we lean in for each other in a sisterhood, in a, in a power of togetherness. And that's literally how we transform this program. We got players that wanted to be here, that wanted us, that didn't want the money or the bag and everything that's coming with it now. They wanted to be a part of something that we were building together where we could believe bigger than we'd ever imagined. And if you don't know already, I'm a faith-based person. And so- They, they did know, they can hear it all in your voice. <laughs> exactly, you know, I'm just thinking about when you were on the show about three years ago, your dissertation at that time let us know that you would be sitting here today saying what you were saying, that you're saying. And we knew right then you had a plan, you had a program. And you know the word be with me, that's that's another word you can call teamwork. And the thing about it, we can understand and hear you within you speaking about this. And then you also institute family into that. So you know, you're a great coach, I tell you. We like seeing that because we've been following George Mason for a long time. But I just been following now the female basketball even more because we need to give them their props. You know, Donna always tell me about her scoring and stuff. But I figured she was probably playing. And the all third I know that you know. I just got Tony. All I know that about a month ago, I got honored after some thirty years or forty years of playing basketball. I'm still in that one thousand point club, playing with you know a men's ball during that time. But now to know about that, there you go. But to be still in the conversation, come on, Tony. That's Vanessa say you just take the back seat. <laughs> but, but, but Vanessa, I want to go back. You, you, I know you don't want to make this about yourself, but but it has to be some of you because you talked about the players, the personalities, the characters and all that. You remind me of a Don Staley oh. as far as what she's talking about, what she instills in her players, uh, uh, that what she allows her players, understanding the players, the scope of all of that, you know, grooming them and all that. That is what she said. And when I look at you and I look at her, I say, it's some similarities right there. Wow. Well, you know what? Um, you know, truth is uh, stranger than fiction, right? And so Dawn Staley and I would have been teammates at UVA had I not decided to go to another university. We, were, we would have been in UVA together. So every time we see each other, we kind of reminisce a little bit about that, what that would have been like. But obviously, Dawn Staley, give this woman her flowers. Um, and she did it her way. You know, there are a lot of times where you get in these positions, especially women of color, and there's a certain way they want it done. But it's tough to take a stance and say, hey, you know what? If you get me here and you get the way I'm going to bring this success to this university. And you know what, Donna? Shout out to all the coaches who maybe didn't go 38-0, but they were able to pour into the lives of dynamic women that can go on and maybe be 38 and 0 in their career and help somebody else up. Because at the end of the day, there's gonna be one team that stands on that podium. But we have an opportunity and we call what we do here at Mason our ministry, that we are allowed to get up every day and pour into the lives of young women. And you know what? Leave space for them to pour back into us. Because it's about growing a generation and every year I have 15 girls, maybe 16, that I have the ability to help shape and mold for the future. Not everybody's gonna be a Caitlin Clark and not everybody will have the blessed uncommon favor to be a Dawn Staley, right? But we all have the ability to change the direction of young people's lives and help mold them to be, well, maybe to sit in the second highest seat of the land. Oh, I'm sorry, Tony, we already have done that. <laughs> mold them to be the president. And that's what I go into coaching every single day that, you know what, I move from I have to get up and do this to I get to do this every day. I get to coach. I get to inspire. I get to motivate every day. And maybe I'm not 38. No, but I'm 38. No, as a champion for Christ every day that I get up to go and do my best and give my best with what God has found my hands to do. And that's our motivation. Our coaching staff. We get to get up every day and pour into the lives. And you know what? I may not be 38 no in the record, but every day I can get up and be 38 no in the champion in these 15 girls' lives. And that's hey, really NASA, I'm available. I'm available to help you coach anytime you want to. Not, not, you know, you want to keep coach. winning, Donna. She, she <laughs> want to keep winning. Come on now. But you know what? I, we do joke a lot, but at the same time, just listening to you and speaking and everything, these are the kind of coaches that we need at this point in time. They had got so everything now is talking about 
letting someone have your image? Can you do this? Artificial information, everything. But what we need is mentorship. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're giving them. You're not just telling them. Because when I went to college, I didn't go thinking I was going to the pros and say, I needed an education. And that's what I had, under, I had to understand. My father had just died at 39 years old. So I wasn't worried about I, I could go to pro. That's the motivation these individuals need now. They go there, don't want to learn the fundamentals. They want to just utilize what they got there. But they have to understand this is just part of the world, mm -hmm. a, smart, a, a smart part of it if you follow through because it learns you how to teamwork, learn you how to be an individual, but it learns you how to live. And when I listen to you, you're the kind of coach men and women need more of. We oh. need mentors. We need individuals that really care about the people, not just the game. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I appreciate that. Amen. Because you know what? I think, Donna, you and I have lived in this environment where we didn't get paid for our name, our image, or likeness, and we're like, oh, wow. But you know what? Power to the women now that get that opportunity because women's basketball has been raised and should be recognized. And if you can't get paid, if you can't, if you're going, if the university is getting and the media is getting, then maybe these players, obviously, they should have their opportunity too. But in the Bible, it says, if you want to get anything, get wisdom. Get wisdom. Money is fleeting. Fame is fleeting. Get wisdom. And that's what you're talking about, Tony. Come and get this education. Get this degree. Mm -hmm. That will last you forever, long after the money has run out. You have this right here. And if you're able to be, you know, and especially for us as African-Americans, we know there was a time we weren't able to go into these institutions and, and get an education from a George Mason. And I coached in black college. I coached at Bethune Cookman. So I understand what that was like. And so, yeah, if you have the opportunity to get all these other material things, that's well and good. But the Bible says if you can get anything, like Solomon said, get wisdom. Mm -hmm. And you can't take that, that away. And, and Vanessa... Like you said, we didn't get paid or anything, but with somebody has to set the path, you know, for it to be better. And now women are getting the, you know, the due jest that they should have gotten a long time ago. We They still got a long way to go. Um, but going back to Don Stelly, could you know her, you know her well. Could you just speak on the person that she is? Because when you look at her credentials, she's been to the, the Olympics. I mean, she's the, she's gotten everything that you could possibly get as far as that. She could be in the NBA coaching if she really wanted to, and they would definitely need her. She could be on the men's circuit mm -hmm. uh, coaching, too, if she wanted to. She could pretty much write her own ticket. But what makes her such a great person? I met her one time many years ago, and my niece was at some – we were at some event, and she's so open, but – could you just speak on her as the person, Don Staley, and not so much the you can talk about the, her being the coach too, but just the person Don Staley is because she makes it known who she believes in, where she stands, and what her foundation is. Yeah. You know what, Don? I, I mean, uh, Don, I think what you can take from what you just said is Don is exactly who you see her as. There is not another side of her. There is not this, oh, I'll be this way on this stage. That's why I said she has been able to do it her way. And everything you read about or hear about, well, what is the, they say out of the heart, you know, out of the mouth, the heart speaks, right? When she was on the biggest stage of her career, she could have said, I did this. Look what I did. She never did that. She gave it up to her team, to her coaching staff publicly. She said even the scout was done by somebody else on her staff. She gave him credit where credit was due. She gave those players their, their flowers. She thanked Holly Rowe and all the media that have supported them. And she thanked God. And mm -hmm. that's exactly who Dawn Staley is. And you can just tell she does it her way. She is wearing Louis Vuitton down. She's Gucci down. <laughs> she, she And she, she is an inspiration to 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 not have to fit in a box, right? Like a lot of times yes. when women look like us, we have to fit in the box, the curly hair, you know, it's gotta be straight. We've got to, Dawn has done it her way and you can tell how the players look at her. They look at her with reverence, with respect, but also they look at her maternally, like someone that I can go and be myself around. And that's, I think that's who we should all aspire to be, to be ourselves. 
And if you are a faith-based person, to be able to speak to that. And she's got knocked over the head for speaking about that. You can speak about anything else. I'm going to speak about my God. Because that's, I think, Donna, you, like I said, you answered the question within asking it. Dawn Staley is exactly who you see her to be. Yeah, and, and you know what's so much important is what you're saying is she's the complete individual, but she's not afraid to be who she is. A lot of times we have individuals in certain ways, but we do not want other individuals to know that or we don't want to utilize that. She mm -hmm. wants anybody to know what she is, how she's doing and why she's doing it. Mm -hmm. And then you look back at her record. She's a really good basketball coach, too, not just a good person. But I think that all comes into play. And I look at you like that. So tell me the one thing, and, and I know we need to jump back to the game a little bit, but when you went into that game expected, and I know you got a, a superstar shooter on one on one side, but when you have a complete team on the other side, there's no way that that was going to be a close game. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, they scared us in the beginning. <laughs> well, that's because the officials – they didn't know how to get the whistles out of their mouth at first. Absolutely. Um, you always, as a coach, want the best for the team. And you look at you look at the likes of a Michael Jordan, right? When he came into the league, everybody was impressed. He, this guy can score 40 points, 50 points, but he wasn't winning. He didn't win until he understood, I got to make everybody around me better, and then we all can win. Doesn't that sound a little bit mm -hmm. like a all of us come up, not one of us, all of us come up together. And I think that that's what Dawn Staley, that's what you witness, a team win. It's okay to have a dynamic player. Trust me, I'd take Caitlin Clark on my team any day. But when you're <laughs> all against a team, and what's so remarkable, Tony, is that her whole team graduated the year before. She lost all her starters. These kids were all brand new. So not only looking at the talent they had, they bought into the message that she she talked about probably back in June when they started working out. For a young team, for freshmen, to get it and click in April in less than a year, that's really mm -hmm. the, the, the dynasty of Dawn Staley is going to come into being. Because you can do that. Caitlin Clark was a senior. These were freshmen. These were 18-year-olds uh -huh. going against a 22-year-old woman, and that team was were very much veterans. So I, I just think, like you said, you saw a team victory, but you saw a buy-in by young women that were freshmen that were new to this whole stage. They were not afraid. They were not afraid. No, and like you said, Vanessa, when you look at that game, I told Tony, let's dissect it a little bit. When you look at the game, uh, I was started out. I mean, they were like hitting every uh, three-point shot. They were dominated, but I looked at it as – Iowa had the outside shooting going at that time. And what would impress me most is that when they got down as far as South Carolina, Don Stelly did not call a timeout. She was cute, cool, cool as a cucumber. And like you said, the freshman had stepped up in that game. But she, I mean, she let them weather the storm, figured it out on their own, because most people would have called two or three timeouts at that time. But I saw the difference in the game is that South Carolina had a, a, a mega inside game, yeah. pounding the ball. Cadoza, uh, they couldn't handle her. And that's what wore them down at the end True. because of that inside game. But uh, And then they took an uh, hour out of the game in the second half because their shots wasn't falling. I, I mean, give me an inside game anyway right. because they dominated. So I saw two different things. I said South, South Carolina is dominating in the paint while Iowa was on the outside. Talk about just, just the way, uh, you know, that game just kind of like played out. Uh, I, I thought that they were frustrating Cardoza a little bit, you know, just double teaming her, and then she got in a little bit of foul trouble. But I thought what the thing exactly. that difference was, Dawn Staley said one time during her at the end, she said, God broke my heart last year at this time. And then this year he came back and redeemed us. What really redeemed them was the outside shooting. Because remember in last year's game, they couldn't hit outside shot. They were waving them off like, go ahead, you can't do nothing. And this year they came back when Cardoza was getting double teamed and not as effective. Those freshmen came off that bench cool as a cucumber. And they redeemed themselves. They were able to knock down those shots that a year ago the team before them, the veterans, weren't able to. So I think it was a combination of both. And I think the aggressiveness inside with Kitts and Cardoza and crashing the rebounds and getting second, that athleticism, 
wore them down. But you know what was big, Donna, is when you watch the LSU game, LSU looked a little tired and lumbered. They, they were running the floor on them like it was a layup drill. They didn't do that against South Carolina. And maybe one or two times they got, you know, the big girl running the floor and getting layups. But they were getting back on defense, shutting down that running game because a big part of Caitlin, a big part of Iowa's offense is transition. And they weren't able to get out and transition the way that they usually do on team. Yeah, but when you come down to the, the bones and brass bones, it was always the fundamental things that will make you win. And as we keep saying, if you keep – we're giving everybody applause, and we're giving you that applause. And that's why I want to ask you, when you take a look at Don Staley and you look at – Three times in the last 10 years, she's been in the final one, and, and she's been in it even more. Do, do you think she has a very good blue, blue, blueprint that more coaches should look at? Absolutely. She gets the best players in the country. <laughs> that's, that's the only blueprint you need. Huh? Hey, hey, that, exactly. Get the everybody, talent. Everybody, everybody used to want to go to UConn and somebody right. in Tennessee, but yeah. that ain't the case anymore. No, no. I mean, Tony – you could be the best coach in America if you don't have talent to coach. You know, it's you True know they talk, they talk about chicken salad, right? But mm -hmm, you're able exactly. to attract six foot seven and the dynamic players. She called uh, her freshman uh, Fuwali a generational talent. Like that's a next level kid. And then you mix it in with a great coach and a great coaching staff that is going to embrace all of that together in one pot. And that's hard to beat. That's really hard to beat. You know, and then now, like Donna said, you have players that say, hey, you know what? I don't have to go to UConn or Tennessee. There's there's somebody else now. And I think that's what Dawn did. She stepped up on the stage and she was different than those schools. She was able to attract. And, and we all know this sport is played by 80 percent of women that look like us. And the representation yes. began to matter. Right. It probably always did. But we weren't allowed to be in those spaces. We did a we did a talk. Dawn Staley, Felicia Leggett Jack. Um, Yo from Ole Miss and myself about coaching while black and it's still out there. It's a podcast and it was it was a daring. It was daring for us because the other coaches, we weren't Dawn Staley. We weren't Olympians. We may not bounce back easily from having this direct conversation, but it needed to be had. Mm -hmm. It needed to be had so that ADs and other people, we were able to be the assistant coaches all the time. We were able to be the recruiters at these big time programs, but if we weren't able to sit in the first seat. And so mm -hmm. that podcast to bring attention to women that look like us should have the opportunity to be coached by women like us. Mm -hmm. And we took a strong stance and it worked. If we were able to get the ear of people and you see the new hires now, they, they're, little, they're more African-American and, and basically minorities, not just black women, but Hispanic women. Like we need those opportunities as well. And you see, Dawn, we would talk all the time, like, we can't only get to these spaces. We have to win. We yeah. Have to be successful. And so we, on that stage. we stand on the shoulders of Dawn because we took that stance with her. We were in her locker room in South Carolina and we took that stance. And it was like, hey, we can't just get here. We got to get here and win. And we've done that. And Dawn has, you know, that's why a lot of people are just so proud of her because she opened the door for women that look like us that otherwise we wouldn't have had a great opportunity. And Vanessa, you all had to be bold because like you said, Dawn Staley was already on the stage. I mean, she wasn't going to get the backlash that probably the rest of you all would get. But to step up and be brave about that, somebody has to be able to be the voice. Somebody has to be that brave person, no matter what it may bring them in the long run. And like you said, it's different rules for African-American coaches and everything. Cause you just spoke, you got to win. Cause if you don't win, goodbye, adios, see you later. Yeah. So, so that is so key with what, but looking at the WNBA and all the talents, Cadoza is leaving. A lot of other people are leaving. Kaylin Clark had an outstanding year. Uh, the portal has hurt a lot, probably on the men's side more than the women's side because of all the transitions uh, that people are able to do, how has it affected the women's game? Maybe not as much movement as the men's game, but how has it affected the, the, the women game uh, for the players and, and the teams? I think I'd say this portal is just like that. That little, that portal opens up and 
next thing you know, you're rebuilding again because you have to recruit your own team every year. Not mm. just new talent, but your team because now they're seeing, oh, they're getting $20,000. They're getting this. They're getting something for their parents. Before, it was a bag that you had to hide under the table that these schools were doing. Now they're saying, hey, put the bag on top of the table. It's all free. It's all legal now. And you can talk about, not us, but, you know, the collective and those spaces can talk about money and giving these kids. And so I literally thought, Donna, this is strange. I was on a call with a kid that said, it was in the portal, coach, I'm only looking to go power five because I want the money and I don't care if I play. Wow. But a lot of attitudes are coming up like that now. And I'm like, well, you know what? Then you are definitely not the kid for me because I want kids that want to play. This space was created by women in the 70s that stood boldly, right, to say, hey, we deserve Title IX. We deserve to have the same opportunity as men. The opportunity was to be able to play. So let's not get this twisted now. If it's about the money, then you're right. You're not for my program because I want women that want to embrace the opportunity that these women in the 70s fought for us for. And if you're saying, I don't even care if I play, that's not good for the game. That's mm -hmm. not even good. What player would basically not want to Exactly. But you know what? The money has taken over that. There you go. There and, you well, go. that's the reason why I said, how has it hurt programs? Oh, yeah. You, you, we, we recruit a certain type of player. And that player may not always step out and be the fanciest kid coming from, you know, all these athletes. But I want a kid that wants to play basketball, that wants to be a part of a team, wants to be a part of building, but also wants to be a part of growing as a young woman. That's important. These four years are only going to last four years. And then what do you have after that? You know what you have? You have memories. You've had guidance. You've had someone that poured into you. You know, you, you have something you can pull back on, just like you were saying, Tony. The coaches you had pushed you to be great. You remember those people in your life, right? Exactly. But now you have yeah. these girls that, or and guys that say, hey, you know what? They have agents. Donna, they're in the portal with agents. And I get it. I understand if that's what you want. But I got to talk to your agent before I can recruit you. That's probably not going to be at this level. And it's definitely levels now, right? You have the power five that can have that have great football programs that have this wealth of money that can offer these kids. I don't know, what was it? Utah football team got everybody a, a, a truck, all the football players a truck lined up on the field. Everybody got a brand new four-wheel drive. The, the Where does that happen? <laughs> I mean, the ones that are outside of the power five, we can't, we just can't compete with that, right? So mm -hmm. You want these players to get what the name and the image and the likeness is due to them because the universities are getting the the, the networks are getting it. So you understand how it's trickled down. Um, but it does. It does make it tough. You have to keep recruiting your kids. You know, the people are going to be in their ear and like, hey, come here. I can give you this. But you just got to hope that you have players that buy into what you what you believe, want to want to build and create something here. And I think that we do. I really do. I really think that I always say I want somebody that wants me. <laughs> there you go. And you know, you, you know, you're right. And the kids have to buy in everything. We have, as individuals and parents and consumers, we've already bought into this kid is going to be great. Let's yeah. throw this money behind him. Oh, he's already won four Super Bowl. He's the GOAT. That's yeah. just the way we go. But at the same time, to me, women college sports in general, General made a great step this year because of basketball in particular. And I'm glad to see that now. It you gets the respect. You know what, Tony? Mm -hmm. We've already been here. And that's what I want to, that's what I, what I always caution people to say. You're just taking notice. Mm -hmm. The world just took notice with 18 million viewers. But Donna, we've been here. We've been, been here. We've been a good product. It's just that now we're getting that media attention and coverage that we deserve. And now you're watching. And I'm glad you're watching at a time like this. Like we mm -hmm. have the women's game, the coaches, all of this stuff that has happened in our game has been happening. And it's the women that didn't stop fighting for the, the media time, the days our games are played on, the times our games are played on, the out the networks that that play our games. I mean, 
when I grew up, Donna, it'd be, you may see a Tennessee-Iowa game at two o'clock on a Wednesday mm-hmm. afternoon. You know, it was something that was so far out of regularly scheduled time, but it took those years to fight for that so that we could get the platform to be seen. So we've been here. I'm mm-hmm. glad you are. They just had noticed. That's what that is. Exactly. But you think about Oh, no, they had noticed. They just didn't want to recognize. <laughs> well, it, but, but the thing about it is they don't think that women's basketball or sports has the same value as men's there sports. You but now you're looking at not only the TV contracts, but look at the, the, uh, the arenas. I mean, pack jam, not just for throughout the season people are coming to watch. Look at the final four. Look at the, the final game. I mean, you had men and women, uh, little kids, most of the time it was just basically women coming to the games a lot. Yeah. But now the men are just as excited. And all you heard this year that the women's tournament was much better than the men's tournament. And the men were rocking. The NBA men were chiming in. LeBron and them were tweeting after games. Like, it was it was what we were doing. These mm-hmm. women deserve this. I'm, I'm really excited for our game and that, that at some part we were – pivotal in any way by just playing when nobody was watching, right? Like how many gyms did you play in Donna when no one was watching? And nobody. And now you look at uh uh who is it? The Indiana Fever. I think they've sold out every ticket in uh, in obviously the hopes that Caitlin's gonna come there like dancing. Already she hasn't even stepped in the court. Exactly. Well she's out. already a millionaire so I yeah that speaks that speaks to the the her her talent but but something and I'm going and we, we were we're gonna wrap it up but something that I I was on a uh radio uh uh last last week and they were asking me about the goat Caitlin Clark you know if she didn't win the tournament you know, they labeled her the goat. I said, I hate people using goat for anybody. I said, exactly. for the goat of that, he's the goat, and uh, uh, Serena is the goat, uh, Michael Jordan is the goat, all of that. I said, to me, that's not important. Uh, uh, to me, is what her history is going to be, mm-hmm. not so much her being the goat. She's going to be known as one of the best basketball players of all time because to me, it's so many people that could be labeled the GOAT in college basketball for women and Mm -hmm. men or any sport for just to put the tag on one. I understand the dominance of a a player, but to me, it's more so what you remember for in history, not only as the player, but as the person and your character and all those things that go with it. When you say the GOAT, you close the door on someone else coming behind, behind you. Mm-hmm. You go. If I'm the greatest of all time, then there's no more time for anybody else to be great. No, mm-hmm. for us, we have to raise ourselves up like Caitlin has done, like Dawn has done as a coach, and leave the door open for someone like even in her Gatorade commercial. She said, I score 40, but you can score 50. Like, mm-hmm. leave the door open for someone else because if we shut the door and say all time, the only goat I know is Jesus Christ. Hello. Here you go. Because if I shut the door and say I'm the greatest of all time, then that means nobody else can come after me. No, you want to do it so someone can come after you. And if you look at that, Donna, you would say then Dawn Stanley wasn't a goat because she got there, but she never won it. And you would be a fool to say that, right? She was a great player, an Olympian. She represented our country, and now she just went 38 no. So the goat, it's just too, it's thrown around too lightly. I want to leave the gate wait open so someone else can come after me and be far greater than I ever was. Because if you're not doing that, then you're not pouring in so somebody else can do that. If it's all going to stop with you, how is that? How is that life? How is that feeding my sheep? You want to feed them so they can go on and be better than you are. That's well, I, I can't. I can't end it no better than that, Tony. And, and, and Tony, That's what I'm talking about. Because- yeah, because Tony, as we said, we're going to have Vanessa back on. And Vanessa, maybe we could get Tony up here for a game next year, a couple of games. Oh, you don't want year. none of that. Uh, no, I just I want you to come and watch. I, don't, people, I just want you to come I've been, and watch I've been and out learn. Of, I've been out of college 50 years. There's still people calling my name. Hey, you don't hey Vanessa, want me. I just want you know, money. I, <laughs> right. Vanessa, I just want him to come and you know, watch. Vanessa, I'm going to have to get you back up. <laughs> you and Donnie, y'all be coming. That's all right. I'm ready for I'm working out. That's all right. Are you going to see the products? Oh, that's scary. 
please come back. Cause you know what? We know that one day, no matter how long we have the show, we, we're going to be sitting here talking to you about a national championship. And not only just for the basketball, but you will be a national championship of basketball players. Okay. And that means you're giving them the complete game, not just the game plan. And that's what we need in life. We need to have a complete game. Mm -hmm. We don't need just what we think of win. We got to go after what wins. And it's individuals like yourself. And I say congratulations on your year. You. Keep giving down on those lessons. Just put them down in crayon. I'm going to take them. I'm going to take them, Tony, every time she give them to me, too. Uh, well, and, Tony, and get ready. Because when I get this other knee, I'm coming after you, Vanessa. <laughs> Okay, that's all you got. I'm coming after. All right, I know you got your hook shot. Still ready for me. <laughs> Before I, I, you that, that's clinging. That's clinging the top of the 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 rim and everything. So again, Vanessa, um, my success. Uh, I'm so happy and proud of what you've done for that program, and it doesn't surprise me of the quick success that you had. And I just know that greater is in the future for you as a person, as an individual. Uh, for your team and anything that you lay your hands on. But as Tony say, we don't say goodbye. We say in the minute. In the minute. I love it. Thank you so much, y'all, for having me. Thank I you.